Okay, here we are, 5.3a in College Algebra. And uh, let's just go ahead and get started. We're continuing with logarithms and exponents. And this first thing we're going to do in this lesson is solving exponential equations using logarithmic forms. And then in the middle of page 344 in the green box, there are the steps. I love it when they give you steps because then you just go from one step to the next and you do well. So anyway, let's look at an example. We've got an exponential equation, which means there's an exponent and no logarithm. And what we have for our exponent is 4t. Okay, so whenever you're solving these, you know that you're going to be dealing with logarithms when you have an exponent that is a variable. Okay, if this was not a variable, if this was just 10 to the fourth power, You'd take that to the fourth, multiply it by 150, okay? Um, but when the variable is up here in the exponent, you know you're going to be dealing with logarithms. Sometimes it's easier to solve problems when they're in this form. Sometimes it's easier when they're in logarithmic form. Now the question is knowing when to switch things to logarithmic form and when to leave them in exponential form, okay? Um, and we'll get to explaining some of that shortly. So we're just going to do part A here. Um, part B is the graph, and you're just using a graphing calculator and going from there. So anyway, let's follow the steps. First step says, uh, rewrite the equation with the term containing the exponent by itself on one side. So we're going to try to get this term by itself. So we're going to divide both sides by 150, and we get 20 equals 10 to the 4t. Okay, so we did that first. Now, once we get it in that form, we're going to change it to logarithmic form. So 4t equals log 10 and 20. And again, because this 10 is a 10, we can just get rid of it. So we have that. Okay? That's step three, is uh, rewrite it in logarithmic form. Step four, solving for t. So we're going to divide both sides by 4. And because this log is in base 10, we're going to take log of 20 on our calculator and divide it by 4. And almost always, we're going to get a close to or an approximate so we put that sign there instead of an equal sign just to show that that's approximate because this thing goes on forever so it's just an approximate value to uh, five decimal places and that's pretty much it so you can see in order to solve one of these knowing how to switch it to logarithmic form um, makes things a lot easier okay so let's go to example two Example 2 has to do with doubling time, so it has to do with finances. And we're going to skip A, and the proving, and we'll go to B. All right, so our formula that they give us in A is natural logarithm of 2 over R. And again, natural logarithm is log with the base E. Okay, so you could write it that way instead of this way if you want to. Okay. So, uh, suppose $2,500 is invested in an account earning 6% annual interest compounded continually. How long will it take for the amount to grow to $5,000? So, if this is the formula right here for uh, doubling time, T is time, R is the interest rate, and we invested $2,500 and we put it into an account and we want to find out how long it's going to take um, for that amount to grow to $5,000. Um, and again, this formula works for this particular problem. Okay, so the amount we invested has nothing to do with the answer. We're just interested in how long it'll take any amount to double based on the interest rate. Okay, so we're not interested in the $5,000 or the $2,500. You could use the exact same problem with investing 10000 and waiting to find out when you get 20000 Okay, so the uh, 
the length of time is based solely on the interest rate rather than on anything else. So that's why this problem right here is based on interest rate and time. So we want to learn time based on the interest rate. So the time is going to be ln2 over the interest rate, and in this particular one at 6%. So you take your calculator, ln of 2, divide by 0 0.06, and you get 11.5525. Now you'll notice when I talk about logarithms, um, I say different things, like I just said ln of 2. That isn't necessarily the correct way of saying it. I have never read in a math book or found on YouTube or heard anybody in any of my classes I took when I took math courses um, actually say things like this. So you kind of just make up your own way of, do of saying it because that's just the way it goes. All right, so carbon-14 dating. Um, they give us an example. Y equals the original y, e, and then they give us a big old freaking long number with three zeros to start, and I will not be writing this over and over and let, making you um, listen, listen to me ramble while I'm writing this stuff. So anyway, there's my exponent, and again, I have a t as part of my exponent. So that tells me I'm going to be using logarithms, and particularly... Um, Natural logarithms. This number here, uh, y with a subscript of 0, means the original amount of carbon-14 when I started. Which, again, I don't know how in the world anybody has any clue about an organism, um, especially one that's extinct, how much carbon-14 it had before it died. I mean, gosh, who would know? All right, but anyway, um, enough of my philosophical questioning there. Find the age of the fossil by converting the equation to logarithm. Okay, so they give you, um, to find the age of a fossil, if the original amount of carbon was, uh, y of O, was 1,000 grams. That's the original amount, and that's what's going to go there. And the present amount is 1 gram, and this is what the present is. So what they're asking us to do is find the age of the fossil. So to find the age of the fossil, I am going to need to find t right there. Okay, so when I know I have to find the variable, I know I'm going to have to go ahead and um, use logarithm. All right, so my equation, knowing that information, is going to be 1 equals 1,000 e to the negative all of this stuff. Okay, just assume I wrote all that there. All right, so we follow our steps there. And we're finding, we're trying to find t here. So we are going to divide both sides by a thousand. So we get point zero zero one equals e to all that stuff. And there's a t up there at the end of that number. So I suppose it's good to write that. All right. Next step that we're going to do is write this in logarithmic form, which means this is going to be, and I will write this because it's there, and then that equals log base e or ln of 0 0.001. Now a lot of people like to write log base e because it just seems more familiar than writing ln, but you need to get used to writing ln. Just remember, it's the same thing as log base e. All right, so now we solve the equation, which isn't too hard because what we're going to do is we are going to put a line here and divide it by this. So that's going to go down there, and we'll find out that t equals or not equals. It's similar to 57,103 years old. Okay, so, and then part B um, has you change it, or solve it graphically, which again, we're not going to do. All right, bringing us to the next example, which is change of base. Change of base is, you know, there are some times where the base of your logarithm is not 10, nor is it E. You might have, you know, right now, what you're used to doing with your calculator, because your calculator does log, and it also does 
log base C, which again is ln. Okay, so your calculator will do that and will do that. And that is it. It will not do things like log with a base 2. It won't do it. So this change of base formula, what it does, it is allows you to take any logarithm with a base other than 10 and change it to a base of 10 or a base of E. Okay, And it's the same method regardless of what you're changing. In fact, you can change this base to anything you want. But since your calculator does 10 or E, that's what we're going to stick with. All right, so how does that work? Um, let's use an example here. Let's say that we have the log with a base 8. Okay? What this means is, what number can I put on um, 8 that will give me 124? So that's what I'm looking for. But uh, my calculator won't do that. I can't put in log base 8, so I need to change it to log base 10 or log base E. Okay, either one. Really, really easy to do. All you do to change it to, let's say, base 10 is we take log of the big number over log of the little number. That is it. That is all you do. Okay? If we wanted to change it to um, E, we would take ln of the big number over ln of the little number. That's all there is to it. Okay? So it shouldn't be any problem. I mean, I am going to do an example. Seems kind of silly to do that if I say it's that easy, but let's do one anyway. Okay, so if I have y equals um, doo -doo 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 -doo, log base 2 of negative 3x. Okay, so I want to change this to base 10. Okay, so all I have to do is log negative 3x over log 2. Or I can do ln of negative 3x over ln of 2. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. All right, so that takes us through example 4, and we'll start with example 5 in the video 5.3, B as in boy.